bond markets are sending one big global recession warning. The bond market is flashing its biggest recession signal yet, now that the widely watched spread between the yield on the two-year Treasury note and 10-year note yield has inverted. This so-called inverted yield curve is a reliable indicator for a recession, measured as two quarters of negative growth. But the U.S. curve move is not isolated bond markets globally are reeling, with the U.S. 30-year bond yield falling to a record 2.015%, the U.K. curve inverted and German bond yields going deeper into record negative territory. Gerald Salent says that, this is not recession warning, this is the Great Depression. Let's listen. The warning signs are there. The Greatest Depression has begun. But, let's take a look at the markets. Here's the headline from the Financial Times today relative to yesterday's markets. U.S. delay on China consumer goods tariffs sparks relief rally in equities. Oh yeah, relief rally. You know what that was. Bullshit. You got it. Ba 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 bullshit. They always use this trade war baloney. As I've been saying, that's all it is. It's bigger than that. Dow tanks 800 points in worst day of 2019 after bond market sends recession warnings. It's not a recession warning, it's the greatest depression warning. They're all way behind the curve on this. Don't believe me? How about looking at the print? First of all, you have to understand that everything that the Federal Reserve has done since the 2008 financial crisis was a mistake. And all they did was succeed mm -hmm. in making all the problems that caused that crisis worse. Now, they covered it up by inflating an even bigger bubble than the one that popped in 08. But by trying to normalize interest rates, by trying to shrink their balance sheet, they pricked that bubble. And now we're going to complete the economic crisis that they interrupted in 2008, except the back half is going to be much worse than the front half. In what way? So what, what do you think or what do you predict is, is going to happen next? Well, we're headed for a recession. It's going to be worse than 08. The Fed is going back to zero. They're going to do QE again. It's going to be bigger than the first three rounds combined, but it's not going to work. The Fed is done inflating asset bubbles. All the inflation is going to go to the supermarket uh, and the gas station. It's not going to go into the stock market. The dollar is going to go through the floor. It's going to take the bond market with it. And the next crisis is not subprime mortgages. It's going to be in the Treasury market. It's going to be a sovereign debt and a currency crisis. And this is going to be an inflationary recession. There is no way out. And it's political disaster for Trump. Because the recession is going to start before he finishes this term, which means he won't have a second term. But the worst part of the recession is going to take place on the, the watch. Winter is coming, and so is an uncharted economic abyss. Some economists seem to think that only a credentialed economist has the right to be utterly wrong about an issue of economics. Their contempt for amateurs columnists with broad audiences, for example, would sear the lungs if inhaled. So because criticism just makes me feel so terrible, let me phrase a whole set of nagging worries as questions. Can we agree there are no stupid questions? Probably not. But let's try anyway. Question number one, how in heaven's name did we arrive in a world where you must pay someone to borrow your money, and what does that mean to the punters? Like, um, me? At the moment, there is more than $14 trillion U.S. in negative yielding debt extant in the world, meaning money is not just cheap, it's on sale at a loss. Let's put that sum in perspective, Canada's GDP in 2018 the entire economic output of a G7 country was about $1.7 trillion U.S. 14 trill is a huge chunk of global wealth. Governments, many of them European, are actually offering and investors are buying bonds that are worth less at the end of 5 or 10 or even 30 years than their purchase price. Negative Yield Mortgage And a bank in Denmark is now offering a negative yield mortgage. JISC Bank will lend customers a 10-year fixed rate mortgage with an interest rate of minus 0.5%, which means those borrowers will actually pay back less than they borrowed. As for the punters, some have pensions, private and public 
which, if this trend continues, will be forced to severely reduce their payouts. Some have RRSPs and other savings, which are subject to the same market forces. The expectation my generation was raised on was that prudence and parsimony would result in a nest egg later in life, which someone would pay to borrow, which would help fund your retirement. Now, apparently, we will have to pay someone to hold our money for us. Bloomberg, the financial news agency, moved an explainer piece on all this last week, which suggested that this is all perfectly normal. Relatively flat economic growth in the developed world, explained the explainer, combined with ever-increasing concentration of wealth, has left rich people and companies sitting on vast piles of cash for which there is weak demand. The rules of economics being what they are, theorized the author, it only makes sense that financial institutions would begin charging to store this surplus money. After all, if you own something really expensive, don't you have to pay to store it safely? A safety deposit box costs money, doesn't it? What the explainer avoided was where a lot of this money came from in the first place. Which brings us to question number two, governments have printed unimaginable amounts of money, inflating the money supply, since 2008. That must have consequences for the punters, right? In early 2008, before the criminal greed of America's mortgage and investment bank industry nearly destroyed the world's economy, the balance sheet of the U.S., Federal Reserve stood at about $870 billion. Speaking of 2008, there is no better example of economists being wrong. Larry Summers and Alan Greenspan, two economists who rose to manage much of the American economy, not only didn't see the subprime crisis coming, they both fought successfully against regulation of derivatives, which are essentially bets on the rise and fall of asset values. Wall Street's creation of ever more insane derivatives basically caused the meltdown while regulators looked the other way. Ben Bernanke launches blog defending actions as Fed chief. Lessons from the 2008 recession. Then Fed chair Ben Bernanke and his fellow governors, desperate to avert complete disaster, plugged in the money printing machine. Actually, money printing is done electronically, with a few computer keystrokes. The Fed balance sheet is now at nearly $4 trillion. The European Central Bank began printing money in 2015, €2.6 trillion euros over four years, or about €7,600 for every person in the currency bloc. Japan, the UK and Switzerland have all done the same in differing amounts. The technical term for it is quantitative easing. The central banks have used the oceans of new money to buy bonds from their own debt-addicted governments, with the intended result of lowering the cost of borrowing and encouraging risk-taking, which is at least one explanation for the nosebleed stock market levels nowadays, and the staggering levels of household debt here and in the US. But there is serious pressure to do even more. Which brings us to question number three, winter is coming, and so is another recession. It is inevitable. 10 years have passed since the last one. What will we do this time? And, the punters. One thing central banks won't be able to do this time is lower interest rates significantly. As negative rates are already here. U.S. President Donald Trump, judging by his weekly rants about the incompetence of Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, whom Trump appointed, seems to think monetary policy should be in the hands of politicians like him. Now that would be a confidence-inspiring move, wouldn't it? Trump thinks cutting U.S. interest rates even further is just the ticket. We'll talk about Ponzi schemes, but do people really know what a Ponzi scheme is, Stacey? Well, of course, we've been talking about Ponzi schemes because you can't taper a Ponzi, and that was attempted over the past year with quantitative tightening and interest rates rising. Obviously, that has all fallen apart especially in Europe, where we have 15 trillion in negative yielding debt. It went up by over 600 billion in one day just in the past week. And now I want to look at a headline about the unthinkable becoming thinkable. Of course, it's always been thinkable here on Kaiser Report. We always think outside the box. But here in the mainstream media, they're saying, could Treasury yields ever fall into negative territory. Investors are wondering whether U.S. Treasury yields might follow the trend witnessed in Germany or other sovereign markets 
and eventually fall into negative territory. The unthinkable is now thinkable. Of course, this is the German yield, and this is the U.S. 10-year yield. And as you see, since uh, basically the European Union finally began quantitative easing in earnest, um, they've like gone into... Bennett, benefit. What they don't understand is that it's the biggest bubble in history. The sovereign bond bubble is by far the biggest Ponzi scheme bubble that's ever been created in the history of the world. And when you talk about these sovereign bonds trading at negative rates, that means the price of the bond is at 3,000 year highs. That's how extended this bubble is. And how does it get there? It's because the banks are lending against the Ponzi value of the bonds to f leverage more buying of those Ponzi extended bonds. And of course, like Iceland, this will uh, result in a 98% collapse. Never in the history of the world until 1971 did the human race ever engage in a all fiat currency commerce trading settlement system. I, we've always had gold-backed currencies or other, some other hard asset. That's why nations went bankrupt all the time. That's why many wars happened is because France would go bankrupt. They would have no gold left or something like that. So now we have just an infinite regress of ever referring to another contract or another fiat currency printed by something backed by we don't know what, except for perhaps uh, the mightiest army that has ever stalked <laughs> and threatened the earth. And that's what we have now. So that's why they could go, they think, they believe they could do this. All right, right. I mean, it. it's a good point that up until 1971, there was always at least one currency in the world that had a gold backing. You know, the Brenton Woods Agreement that was after World War II set the American U.S. dollar up as a currency that ultimately had a settlement in gold. And then that was stopped in 71. Then you had fiat currencies referring to other fiat currencies. And that's how you end up with a global Ponzi scheme. And you had as... Nomi Prinz writes in her excellent book, Collusion, about how the central banks then were no longer competing with each other in a mercantilist system, but became their co-conspirators in a global monetarist system where each bank was simply passing the hot potato around the world. And there was never any moment when interest rates were not being cut over the past 40 years, 45 years. That's never happened. One country may have raised a bit, but another country would have dropped by uh, considerably more. The net result is now now, the, goal, the globe is, uh, they're the debt to GDP for planet Earth is approaching. From CNBC, stocks plunged 800 points Wednesday in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, worst performance of 2019 after the bond market flashed a troubling signal about the U.S. economy. Investors worried about the state of the economy rushed to long-term safe haven assets, pushing the yield of the benchmark 30-year Treasury bond to a new record low on Wednesday, today. That's why people are going into gold. That's why you have the gold bull run, and it's running. Gold is up 20% since I call the beginning of the gold bull run. <laughs>